All right, so we were talking just a bit ago, so I wanted to share with some other people about how hyperbaric oxygen therapy can help your migraines. And a lot of people don't know what hyperbaric is, right? I mean, we talk about this, we, we, have, we have five chambers in our clinic, uh, and we treat a lot of patients with it, but most people don't know much about it until we explain it to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so hyperbaric is essentially just oxygen under pressure. Okay, so when you have oxygen under pressure, what happens is your, your lungs, okay, oxygen comes in to your lungs here through your breath, through breathing. And what happens is, is these, the neighboring blood vessels and arteries, right? Oxygen diffuses in through there and it gets into your bloodstream. Okay, so oxygen then travels all throughout our body. Okay. So we have the we have the body here. Oh my god. Giant feet. Um we have the human body. We've got oxygen hopefully all through it. But that's not really the case. And that's the misunderstanding, is that if you and oxygen is carried through our blood, right? Mm -hmm. If you filled me with, we're gonna go with stick figures here, blood, right? I, I wouldn't have, I would only have five liters of blood, give or take, five and a half, you know, whatever. But I would probably only fill up to here. Mm -hmm. But something allows us to pump enough blood to different regions when we need it, and that's really important. And that's, this relates to migraines, and that's called the autonomic nervous system. So it's really a part of our brain that says, hey, I'm using my arm, or I'm using my brain. I need you to pump oxygen to it, or pump blood to it, to relay oxygen. Right. But what happens when we don't have enough oxygen? Okay? Or let's, what happens when the autonomic nervous system isn't working well, which can, in fact, happens a lot with migraines? Mm -hmm then we're relying on these systems to do something uh, that normally might be happening automatically, but for people with migraines, it's not happening automatically. Follow? Yeah. All right, sense. cool, yeah. Um, so what we like to use is the hyperbaric oxygen therapy mm -hmm. because what hyperbaric does is not only do we increase the concentration of oxygen within the chamber, so, it, which is which is helpful, but not ne completely necessary a lot of times. Because it's not the oxygen that you're breathing in; it's the pressure that causes more oxygen to get into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. So if we look at this as an artery, this is this artery that's going to your, let's say your brain, even right. You know, you have a few oxygen molecules. Well, let's do it this way: they are being carried by red blood cells. Mm -hmm. So red blood cells are bigger, pretty big, and they bind up to four oxygen molecules. And these little little blue dots are denoting the oxygen molecules. So usually they're carrying four oxygen molecules when they're traveling. You hope they are. Gotcha. They, they are intended to. Mm -hmm. They don't always, right? But yeah, they're carrying four oxygen molecules. So to get oxygen, let's say to your brain when you're having a migraine, mm -hmm. which you need a lot more oxygen for, uh, especially when you're having these, the oxygen has to be carried by the bloodstream and the red blood cells. But what happens when we have a migraine? We're in pain, we get these constricted blood vessels. Mm -hmm. So now our blood vessels get kind of tiny, right? And these tiny capillaries make it small. And then these bigger red blood cells maybe can't get through them. Oops. So, the hyperbaric, what the hyperbaric does, which is really important, this is the major concept, is that under pressure, oxygen is now dissolved into your plasma, the fluid of your blood, and not required to be carried by your red blood cells. Really important. Mm -hmm. And additionally, the pressure, it's just, this is just physics, actually shrinks the molecule. So oxygen goes from a gas to a liquid state. 
which normally doesn't doesn't happen under normal barrack or normal sea level or whatever right. conditions, right? But under pressure, something changes in there. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go into what the something is because that's not really important right now. But we go from a gas to a liquid. So now we have all this oxygen in the bloodstream. So now it doesn't matter how darn small our oxygen, our our, uh, our blood vessels are. We're getting this oxygen disseminated throughout the entire body. So now we don't need the blood blood flow in the same context that we that we did before when we only had so much, you know, blood flow available at one time. Now we have we are only so many of our blood cells available at one time. How about that? Right. Now we have a lot more fluid. This lives not only in blood vessels, it lives in your cerebral spinal fluid. Mm -hmm. It lives in your lymph. Basically any fluid that you have, it starts to dissolve in all these things. So now your lymphatic system, which is your detoxification system, is now carrying oxygen, right. which is really cool. Yeah. It's not what it's meant for, but it's what it can do too. Mm -hmm. So now you're using all these additional systems to carry oxygen. And that's really important because with migraines, we're dealing with the brain. Migraines are a disorder of sensory processing in the brain. Mm -hmm. So migraines are a brain condition. They're not like an eye problem. They're not an ear problem. They're not a neck problem. They are a problem with the brain. Mm -hmm. And when we can get more oxygen to the brain, we can heal the brain. Okay. Yeah. So when we heal the brain, and that is a, a little bit more complicated mechanism mm -hmm. of electron transport chain making ATP, which is the energy currency, and that creates what we call neuroplasticity. So we're essentially making healthier brain cells. And healthier cells throughout the body too. This is occurring systemically, but we're interested in the brain if we're talking about migraines. Yeah. So it's making these healthier brain cells, and these healthier brain cells can now appropriately uh, determine or make sense of information coming in mm -hmm. to, our, to our brain, to our cells, so that now light that comes into our eyes isn't quite so problematic, it doesn't set off a migraine, mm -hmm. or sound doesn't set off a migraine, or I eat a piece of chocolate and I don't get a migraine, or I have a glass of wine and I don't get a migraine because now the brain is healthier and along these little, this little pathway that occurs in the, it's actually a big pathway, but it's called the trigeminal vascular pathway mm -hmm. and that's what's associated with migraines. That that pathway has a lot of little stops on it, a little like checkpoints. Right. These little checkpoints are what are kind of in error. They're like cell ne neurological, there are a bunch of little brain cells that are grouped together, mm -hmm. called complexes or you know these different areas. That's what gets affected. But when we do hyperbaric to these areas, we heal those, potentially. Mm -hmm. We heal those areas, and now the sensory gating areas along this pathway are healthier, right. and they, carry, they pass the baton with the right information. Nobody's dropping the baton in the relay race. Right? This is like a relay of information to the brain. But if along the relay of information, it's like a game of telephone, if you go around and, and, and there's a completely different uh, bit of information that's related to the last person than when it started, that's a real problem yeah. in the brain and it results in these migraines. Right. And the pain and all the other things involved with them. So we wanna look at saying, what can we do to get to the source of the migraine? And that's to heal this trigeminal vascular pathway mm -hmm. with oxygen. But we can't just breathe oxygen and make this happen. It doesn't, we can't just take, well, why don't I just get canisters of pure oxygen and read them? Because the oxygen, you can fill all the oxygen you want in the lungs, but that's not the problem. The problem is the oxygen here is not getting to the area it needs to because it doesn't have either the right circulation or enough oxygen right. or the delivery autonomic nervous system is, isn't delivering it the way it's supposed to. So we don't want to rely on that solely. We want to fix the problem that's occurring up here. Mm -hmm. The cool thing is when we fix this problem with hyperbaric, it also often fixes this problem. 
and fixes any of the vasoconstriction problems. And it actually creates new blood vessel formation. And we actually get new blood vessels formed mm -hmm. with the hyperbaric oxygen called angiogenesis. All this stuff is researched and proven and we know this is the way it occurs. And it, the other thing that is really important to understand with, in reference to migraines and hyperbaric is its effect on inflammation. This maybe I almost should have led with, potentially. Because what hyperbaric does, which is really, really important, is with migraines, right, people talk about um, you have caffeine and it helps your migraine. Why does that happen? Well, because it's creating the healthy, or not with caffeine, but it's creating vasoconstriction, which is this smaller vessel. Mm -hmm. Now, we run into the problem, if we just did that, what you do with, with caffeine is you're kind of temporarily alleviating a symptom, but you're, but you're decreasing the red blood cell delivery of oxygen. Right. But what hyperbaric does is by decreasing the blood vessel size, it's decreasing the inflammation, and you're increasing oxygen still, while decreasing the inflammation, it is an incredible recipe for success. Mm -hmm. So you decrease the inflammation and you increase the oxygen content and it equals a way better experience. Right. But this is really important and I don't know if I'm explaining it well enough, but does it make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. You, so that size of the blood vessel and you get all this inflammation in there, right. hyperbaric takes that inflammation down right. by reducing the size of this vessel. Right. Because all of our blood vessels can squeeze and dilate. That's important mm -hmm. to understand. But when we squeeze them, we kind of sacrifice oxygen usually when we do this right. in our body. But under hyperbaric, we're not sacrificing oxygen anymore. Right. Now we have all these little oxygen molecules still that no matter how small the little tube goes, we're trying to, we're trying to fit the, the, the little thread through the needle, right. right? It doesn't matter because these oxygen molecules are still tiny, super tiny, and they still get to the destination. X marks the spot. Right, okay. Yeah. So those are some of the ways we really look at with hyperbaric creating a difference. So, you know, inflammation, is kind of that last piece. Right. And so we want to remember that. So we look at healing the brain through oxygen, mm -hmm. really important, healing this trigeminal vascular pathway, right. creating neuroplasticity in healthy brain cells, yeah. which is long lasting changes and effects. This right. isn't like temporary, this isn't temporary fix. It has temporary fixing capabilities and it does help temporarily. We have people all the time that go in there and their headaches better, their migraines are better. Right but it's the long-term effects. So I won't have to do hyperbaric for the rest of my life. So you won't have to do hyperbaric for the rest of your life is exactly right. Because that is our goal always here, to find a source and to fix it. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to have to keep doing this. Yeah. That's the beauty of the body and neuroplasticity, is, looking, is, is understanding that if we create these changes with enough frequency over time, mm -hmm. it creates a permanent change. But the key, you have to have enough time of treatment to do this. Right. And oftentimes these things take upwards of 40, 50, 60 treatments. Mm -hmm. Now, here at our office, right, we charge, we're not really charging a lot for this. Unfortunately, it's not covered by insurance, mm -hmm. but um, we try to make this accessible for people. But mm -hmm. these things are all over. You can find different areas that have these. Um, certainly if people have questions, they can, they can contact us if you have this type of uh, scenario, we would love to help. But if not, just to understand and somewhere close by that maybe can help you. This is a wonderful treatment that, in addition to the work you're doing with your with your um, primary care and your neurologist, and those types of things, this can be extremely helpful and beneficial for lots of people. Mm -hmm. It's not a 100% fixes everybody, but it can be really, really helpful and, and uh, something to consider. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.